Hi, you've clicked on to today's Tropical Tidbit for Thursday. Over here in the Atlantic, we still have our two main systems to look at. Hurricane Katia, now a hurricane, and Invest 93L. Look at this big mess in the Gulf of Mexico, and it is a mess. Not much improvement over yesterday's organization, but you can see that we have a lot of energy in here, and there's nothing. Again, there's a void in the eastern Pacific. No thunderstorm activity, no organized disturbances. Usually, we have a competing entity down here, but we have no such thing right here, which means that 90 93L is free to hog all of this energy to itself and use it for its own purposes, and chances are it's going to try to develop out of this eventually. If we zoom in on this, we can see that there's not really any kind of circulation. What low pressure that's trying to form is probably right in here, and this is where the focus point is going to be. Thunderstorm activity is off to the east of it. You can see there's some streaming cirrus clouds coming out of the west due to a little bit of an upper level low over Louisiana that is shearing the system. Eventually this low will move up to the north and out of the way, or split off as enough heat gets released from these thunderstorms to help balloon the ridge over the top. This will start ventilating the system and bring air out of the top of the air column, which lowers the air pressure at the surface and will help strengthen this area as it moves on during the next couple of days very slowly towards the west-northwest. This is the water vapor imagery of the nation here. We can see 93L down in the Gulf. Here's where our outlined Texas death heat ridge is right over here showing that this is going to try to move towards it but then it's going to get stopped in its tracks not going to want to move right into the heart of Texas here and thus Texas is going to get teased for rain with this eventually eventually as the wind shear dies down here we should get some showers to extend up into the coastal areas hopefully as this sits down here in the northwestern Gulf but it's not going to move directly in now you can see that there's, that there's a trough coming to the western United States States here. This is going to be propagating eastward across this ridge, and as it does so, it's going to be forcing this ridge to stay pretty far south here. So again, movement into Texas is not going to be likely here. But as this trough moves across, eventually it's going to start digging into the eastern United States to the east of the Texas ridge, and then we're going to be seeing a northeastward tug from the trough on 93L down here, which means it's going to want to get tugged into Louisiana by this trough. At the same time, though, these troughs when they come down over the Great Lakes they tend to lift out pretty fast out this way so this will leave as soon as it comes and could leave 93L behind again at the mercy of this ridge possibly even moving west southwest or southwest towards northern Mexico or southern Texas or the border somewhere in there so there are a couple of possibilities with this system and the models are definitely showing the mess that we have right now these are the models this morning notice that the spaghetti plot really looks like spaghetti this morning definitely a mess here and shows basically all it's confirming here is that this is going to meander around not moving very much for a few days south of eastern Texas and western Louisiana and not going to want to go anywhere very fast and we can see that we have a whole group of models in here that actually eventually take it west-southwest into southern Texas. And then it looks like we don't have anything really showing it moving northeast. But in reality, we have some global models that do. And I decided to list them here instead of showing them all to you because these model plots generally don't show the global models. We have the GFS ensemble mean, Euro ensemble mean, Canadian ensemble mean, and the UK Met all end up bringing this into Louisiana eventually. And then we have the GFS operational, Canadian operational, and the Japanese agree with this model set towards southern Texas or northern Mexico down here as a west-southwest movement eventually. So we're very split here. And this is going to be a great challenge for forecasters. What we can see here is that a direct move into the heart of Texas is unlikely due to the big ridge in here. And so a deflection this way or this way is what we're going to see and it's going to be a slow process. Now there are some things that we're going to have to consider here before choosing a model. And if we look at the UK Met, day 5, 500 millibar height in here, what I want to show you is you can see the trough over the Gulf of Mexico. It's right near the Louisiana coast is where it has 93L at this time. Notice that we have the Atlantic Ridge out here. Here's Cadia, by the way. And then we have the ridge over the Four Corners region now. Notice the very strong trough that comes into the Gulf of Alaska and southern Alaska in four to five days. This is one feature that all of the global models seem to agree on, and I'm going to hone in on this because this is going to be key. If we have a very strong trough over the Gulf of Alaska here, this is 528 decameter heights at 500 millibars, very deep, that's going to try to pump this ridge over western Canada. And if it pumps this ridge over western Canada, that means that the center of the Texas High is going to want to be over here to the west over the Four Corners region 
outlined pretty far to the south over here. So you can see where it's outlined in here, which means that a western movement into southern Texas is going to be very hard to pull off, and we'd have to have it move southwest into northern Mexico if we have the ridge aligned in here. So what we're going to have then is the short wave coming across the northeast, and then we have a break in between. So what the system is going to do is going to take the path of least resistance either this way into the weakness or this way into the weakness to the north. Now there's another very important thing to consider. You can see Cadia over here. Notice this line that comes down here and then comes back out here. This is a ridge, folks. This is a ridge in between Cadia and where this would be Lee in here, 93L, there's a ridge in here between the two storms, and I've talked about this before. The outflow, again, to the northwest of the storm is going to be minimal due to this ridge over here. You can already see on the satellite, and my loop just died on me over here, but you can see on the satellite that the streaming Cirrus is moving southward to the east of the system already, and if my loop would reload here, and it's not going to, but you can see that the clouds in here would have been motion. These cirrus clouds are moving out of the northeast. So this is the big outflow channel that we're already seeing with 93L in here, most of the cirrus streaming this way. When this outflow moves out to the southeast of the system, what it's doing is it's it's sinking in here. The air is sinking, and when it sinks, it warms and dries and raises air pressures in the mid-levels, which means that we end up starting to building build the ridge to the southeast of where 93L is due to its own outflow, and then Cadia comes out in here and probably helps strengthen that ridge with some of her outflow as well. This does two things for both systems right now. One, if we look at this, it's going to help, if this ridging is in here, it's going to help force Cadia out to sea, which I'll talk about Cadia in a little bit, but what it's also doing is it's increasing the steering flow out of the southwest forcing on 93L. So we're now going to have two competing flows, one this way and one this way to the northeast on both sides of these ridges. Chances are with the shortwave trough up here, there's nothing in here, there's nothing down here that 93L really wants. It wants this more. So it's probably going to follow the northeast flow towards this trough, which is why I'm eventually I'm I'm leaning towards an eventual end game northeast into Louisiana and into this trough due to the fact that if it's a significant system it's going to build this ridge. That's the thing is the intensity of this storm is going to largely determine how it influences its environment. If it's a strong storm in here, a hurricane, it'll build this ridge and help propel itself northeast. And if it's a weaker storm, it could have more of a chance to go this way. So we're going to talk about that. And if we look at the European, the reason I had the European all down by itself here is because it actually shows the best of both worlds and is actually the worst case scenario. If we actually turn this on, I didn't set this back to the beginning, but you can see within a couple days this starts to move west and this ridge is still strong by day three. The short wave is up here, hasn't quite dug in yet. This is still sitting still. Day four, it starts to move towards the Louisiana coastline here. It looks like it's gonna move into the trough, but if we go out to day five, it starts moving back south again because this trough moves on. It has the ridge building in towards the northwest and starts bringing this southwest. Day six, you can see it's sitting there. Day eight, it's just barely drifting in the northeast Gulf of Mexico. It's now a major hurricane on the Euro. And day eight here, it's it moves up towards Louisiana finally due to a second short wave that comes down and tries to bring it north. And this starts making landfall as a major hurricane with a 930 millibar pressure. The reason this is the worst case scenario is because it misses the first trough in here and it stalls for even more time and waits for the second trough before moving north. So it first moves north, then south, and then back again, waiting for another trough. It actually makes two loops in here before moving to Louisiana. So this is the worst case scenario because the storm remains over water for eight days. I don't think it'll remain there that long. What I do think is going to happen here as we'll see a best of both worlds, we'll have this model camp here be dominant first. So we'll have the storm move in here and develop, and it's probably going to develop fairly fast after the wind shear lets up, and we could easily see a hurricane over this warm water. That's the thing to be concerned about in here. This will probably move this way, and then follow these model tracks for the first couple of days, and then it'll start feeling the trough off to the northeast and start curving back into the Louisiana area, forming a loop, and I think it'll take it four to five days to complete that loop, probably making landfall around Monday. That's a situation that I'm leaning towards right now, though obviously the uncertainty here is great, and we're going to be talking about this for a while. Of course, there are a lot of possibilities with this. I think that's the most likely for now. 
This would bring some rain for coastal Texas, hopefully, and then Louisiana as well, not getting too far inland into Texas, but some rain in here. The concern is that you can see that we're going to be having a meandering storm over very warm waters in here, 31 degrees Celsius with lots of ocean heat energy, and this is going to be allowing this to strengthen a lot, and we could see this blow up into a hurricane fairly easily if it's sitting over this water for four to five days, so that's the concern right now. Now we can finally move over to Hurricane Kadia over here, and we can see where she is. Her low-level center, I think, is actually popping out towards the west of the CDO. Dry air is actually doing a number on her. Watch this spiral band from the beginning of the loop in here. Notice how it just evaporates, quite literally evaporates in the dry air to the west of the system. So the dry air is finally penetrating the core in here, and she may actually no longer be a hurricane, but we'll see what the Hurricane Center calls on this. She'll be moving west-northwest for the next few days. We'll eventually try to overcome the dry air and strength, and I don't see her getting over a Cat 3 due to that dry air, but she should eventually approach major hurricane status. We can see that the model envelope here generally brings this up towards Bermuda within four to five days, and this is something they need to watch very closely. I still like a track a little bit farther south and west moving up between Cape Hatteras and Bermuda, but the Bermuda should definitely continue to watch this system very closely in case this comes near the vicinity, and then eventually the Canadian Maritimes may get a piece of it too as it starts weakening coming north as a tropical storm. But you can see that this general idea is for a recurve east of the United States. There are still some ensemble groups that try to take it in here. And in fact, the UK Med even turns it west-southwest by the end of its run. But it, I'm leaning more towards the recurve in here. And I think this will escape the United States, especially if we have Lee sitting in the Gulf. Like I said, it will build the ridge in here and help force this, this lady out and then help him propel northeast as well. So it's very interesting interactions that we have with these storms and with Lee. We're going to be talking about his influence on his own environment in here and how strong he gets and how fast. And chances are, with all this energy sitting in here, he will try to become a fairly potent storm. And it's, it's very much on the table that this could become a hurricane affecting the northern Gulf Coast if this spends more than three days, four days over water before getting forced inland. We can hope for a quick quick inland track into Texas or Louisiana within three days before the weekend is out, but we very well may see this sit there beyond the weekend. So we will have to keep an eye on this closely. The northern Gulf Coast from the western Florida Panhandle to northern Mexico should keep a close eye on this system for the next few days. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.